can Christians believe in aliens with all the UFO and I correct myself UAP sightings that are in the news uh, it's important to be able to have a biblical response for that are aliens in the Bible well, are they aliens? Let's talk about that as we watch your culture stray further every day. Howdy, Jonathan Fiala for Further Every Day, sitting in the chair of host and uh, the chair of philosophy. And I'm joined with uh, Miss Nikki on my right in the chair of theology. How's it going? It's going well. How are you? I'm doing well. Glad to have you there, sitting in the reason why we believe what we believe chair, uh, the theology. You're truly sitting in the chair of philosophy, bringing the <clears throat> rigor the Christian must bring. To my left, I've got Mr. Charlie. Let's go, culture. How you doing, sir? We are doing wonderful, ready to discuss a very important topic. Yeah, and something that the church has really let go of, and the culture, your chair, has picked it up and ran with it. Uh, we'll kind of talk about that in brief today, but for now, moving on over to the yes. left, we got the Steve Johnson. Yes. Going to step outside the box, being politically incorrect. You see, that looks more like you're got walking the, like an Egyptian with a tinfoil hat on. The tinfoil hat is on, working today. Where's Dorothy when we need her? And <laughs> uh, I got it on to protect myself from all of those aliens. Alien race. <laughs> the aliens who did it. <laughs> okay. I'm down out there. Uh, Me and Alex oh Jones gosh. got it rolling. We right got on it Alex. rolling. You've got yep. it rolling indeed. So let's go ahead and kind of open up the show. I do think that if you have children in the room, this show is not the show for them. This is a content warning because we're going to yep. play. A, there's a researcher. And we're actually going to pull him up in just a second. He actually uh, interviews folks who have been through um, so-called alien abductions. And I, I actually just want to jump right into it. If you have kids in the room, this is graphic. And it is, dare I spill the beans, demonic. And we're going to, and we're going to go ahead and listen to this just for a couple of minutes. This is going to give you a really good idea of, uh, what happens in a lot, not necessarily the majority, but a significant amount of alien so-called encounters in the way that this one did. Let's go ahead and play it and listen, listen to how academia treats this. We're going to go ahead and roll the clip. Bill's experience took place in Christmas, Florida, 1976. His, his abduction started out typically late at night, in bed. Earlier in the evening, he saw some anomalous lights through his living room window over a forest north of his house. He assumed it was a police helicopter searching for drug runners or something. Whatever it was, it agitated his dogs for several hours thereafter. He eventually went to bed. He was lying in bed, kept wide awake by barking dogs. When paralysis set in, this is something we hear about the experiencers, first sensation they get as they start to feel this paralysis. He was unable to cry out. He could see nothing but a whitish gray, like a mist or fog, although he sensed something, someone or something was in his room. His wife didn't wake him. The next thing he knew, he was being levitated above his bed. Then he had the sensation he was being suspended by what felt like a pole inserted into his rectum. By this time, he was alive with terror. But he couldn't scream. Here is where the story becomes very interesting. The following is an excerpt taken directly from the transcript of Mr. D's interview. Brian D. I thought I was having him. a satanic experience, that the devil had gotten a hold of me and had shoved a pole up my rectum and was holding me up in the air. So helpless, I couldn't do anything. I said, Jesus, Jesus, help me, or Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I did, there was a feeling or a sound or something that either my words that I had thought or the words that I had tried to say or whatever had hurt whatever was holding me up in the air on this pole. That's important. And I felt like it was withdrawn and I fell. I hit the bed because it was like I was thrown back in bed. I really can't tell, but when I did, my wife woke up and asked why I was jumping on the bed.
that's an unusual case in a number of ways. This man claimed that he had been able to stop the experience while it was happening. Of all the research we had read from all the top researchers in the abduction phenomenon research, never had we read where anybody could stop an experience. It wasn't there. So what did we have here? Was this guy off his rocker? Was it remembering properly or what? We were definitely puzzled. Because most of the researchers said that the experience could not be stopped. But yet, I had an experiencer that said it could. It had happened to it. Well, my next thing was to find out more about this experience. I contacted some of the top researchers in this country in abduction research, the ones that had been on the lecture tours, the ones that had written the books information we had consumed to get us to the point to where we were, could call ourselves abduction researchers. Called them at home on the phone. I asked these guys, I said, can you help me with a particular case? And they said, sure, we'd love to. Introduced myself, told them a little bit about the case. First thing out of their mouths, can we go off the record? I said, sure we can. Just help me out here. Off the record means I can tell you what they said, but I can't tell you who said it. I do respect anonymity if it's asked. MUFON always respects anonymity, even with experiencers. You come to me, you don't want your story told or you don't want your name given out, we will respect that. <clears throat> These guys shared with me, the ones that I talked to by phone, that they too had come across cases like this. And I said, really? I said, all we hear is you cannot stop this experience. But yet you're telling me you also have come across people who have been able to stop this experience and in that manner? And they said, yes, we have. Well, my next question is, is how come you don't share this? Why isn't this being shared? If you have documented cases like the one I just came across, why isn't this being shared? One of two answers, or both answers, came out of each of the researchers' mouths that I talked to, off the record. First thing out of their mouth was, we really didn't know what to make of it. I'm fine with that. I didn't know what to make of it. But the problem was, is when they brought up the second answer. We really didn't want to go there because Ooh. it might affect our credibility in the realm. Ooh. Okay. That right there, that right there, that is the thing. So MUFON, by the way, for those who are unchurched, <clears throat> sorry, I got something in my chest uh, and hit some mold, I think. Anyway, <laughs> just great thing there. Uh, MUFON is one of the primary researchers uh, and, and, and we're trying to come at this without the tinfoil hat or we're trying to come with a good response but, you know, Steve Johnson, you know, <laughs> Steve, Steve, for those of you on audio, he's wearing a tinfoil hat. Yes. You know, and uh, again, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff on Rumble. Thank you guys on Rumble. Keep, uh, keep it coming. Uh, but I want to get y'all's response to that because that's incredible because there are hundreds if not thousands of cases that are stopped by the name of Jesus. So to me, the what he said there at the very end was very important. If you're coming at this as a research group that you want to be seen as credible and not promoting a specific type of agenda then you are going to be extremely reluctant to bring up the name of jesus as a solution on this if i could say it like that so to me it is not surprising at all that 
they they held they held that view. I think what's really important here is that while they don't want to do that because of a credibility issue, that does not mean that that should be ignored. It absolutely needs to be analyzed. And to me, this is me only, I'm not sure that it really messes with your credi credibility. Not if you're just reporting information. Right. And it, what, so if you re are not reporting all the information, you're manipulating the and, information. And that's exactly it. And, and why don't we trust our institutions? Well, because we they had eighty percent. We, we had eighty percent of the vaccine deaths with the so-called vaccine for for the mRNA jab. Yep. Which, by the way, we can talk about that now on YouTube because um, you know it, it's the actually truth come is out. out. The, the truth is out. <clears throat> they they're holding that. What if a hundred percent of alien alien quote unquote encounters quote unquote can be completely dispensed with? If the name of Jesus is invoked, what, what, what he said that got me, and I want to get to Steve, what he said that got me going was, it's as though the word Jesus hurt this presence. Yeah. Steve, I, I, I know you got a thought, I, and then I'm going to move to the next clip. Yeah, I do. And here's my tinfoil hat conspiracy. Okay. Okay. My conspiracy would be is that it doesn't follow the fault line of the typical idea that the government's trying to put out on what should aliens do in their contacts. Mm -hmm. And if one of them is not be turned away by the word of Jesus, because that's not going to work. Those aren't demons. That doesn't come from the spiritual world. That, that's it changes. Not what, it changes that, your view. That, that changes everything. It's almost like the name of Jesus has power because the, Jesus is real, and we're not dealing with physical objects, but we're dealing with ex, with interdimensional. I want to go one step further, and I want to hear from a Dr. Brian Huffling. I want to hear from Dr. Brian Huffling real quick, and we're going to go ahead. Pull up. This is an interview with Melissa Dodery. By the way, the uh, MUFON uh, video we just watched, and of course, Melissa Dodery's interview with Dr. Brian Huffling are in the description below. As always, we would never leave you without always. that. So, with that said, let's go ahead and run this. And I think so, but still to today, I am producing from this chair as well because Rai Rai had to go. So, uh, but we're going to go ahead and uh, soldier forth even without our producer guy. Yeah, he's out play jamming uh, well, he Christian music. Stores, but he, thinks, he says he has hundreds of testimonies of people who have claimed to have stopped the abduction experience by calling on the name of Jesus. Now, he, he asked people in MUFON. Now, what's going on here? Because people, you've all said you can't stop these things. And yet when people say the name of Jesus and call out to Jesus, these, these experiences stop in their tracks. Mm -hmm. and, and the response it got was, yeah, we know that, but that's religious, so we, we can't go there. So you do it. Wow. So he did it, and he, he has a book on it, a lot of research on it, and um, other people seem to know about it. And that's another reason why it seems to be demonic and not just alien because mm. why would aliens be repelled at that name? For, and furthermore, the, these things are walking through walls. I think our internet's freezing up here. Walls, supposedly through their crap here we go. things. Uh, and when they have the experience, they're not necessarily leaving their chair. So people have been documented to have just stayed in their chair, in the car, in the living room, and say, they're coming for me, and they leave, and they come back, and they say, well, I was on the ship. They know you're right there in the chair. And so it's, a very, it's very psychological in nature and, and all that. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of evidence that that the the name of Jesus stops that. So, by the way, did anyone pick pick anything interesting up out of that? Some of these experiences, they are still at home. They're mm -hmm. still in their chair. They wake up and they're or they're in bed, and then the next thing they know, they're on the shuttle or at the spaceship. A lot of deception. That's an important. That's an important aspect to it. I think that's interesting. I think it's really important to go to the source of, of what we're hearing, understand it, and then we bring that under the lens of the Bible. And in their mind, they're pro I mean, in their mind, they really believe that physically they are being taken, but really it's, it's a um, mental 
manipulation, or it's a manipulation of the reality, well, of their reality. Yeah, I, I go back to the first clip that we played, when you feel like you've got a pole being shoved. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's just on the bed. Nobody else is there other than his wife. How is it that he could, quote unquote, describe that, feel that? And then fall on back and onto fall the back bed like he was being thrown so this to me it's perfectly explainable i i, I and, and i i want to caution our, our our viewers i'm not trying to be flippant about this at all because it's serious but when you have a biblical worldview this lines up just fine it it's understood a hundred percent it really is now we don't Let's, we don't know the details but what there is a there is a proper explanation th th there, there there's room for this in the christian worldview and some people would say that there's not but but in truth there really is yes and i actually want to go over a couple of uh notes from <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Hugh Ross. Okay, so we don't have enough time to play the video just in the one hour show that we are, we're in. We're already 60 minutes in and there was so much video that I wanted to go over. There's a great lecture and we're going to pull still a couple clips from it. It's in the description down below, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Dr. Hugh Ross's research with uh, Little Green Men. So in his book, Dr. Ross cites a lot of folks and he goes into a few things and stop me if you guys, if I'm, if I'm going through something and I miss something, stop me. And I would, before you go any further, John Arthur, I would, I would say this for the, the people that are listening to this podcast. Hugh Ross is highly respected. He has been studying this kind of stuff for a long, long time. So, and as we're going to go over, he was over in the Soviet Union when no, when very few Americans were allowed over there. He was respected to the point where he was brought into the Soviet Union by the Soviets to help them with their research on extra uh, uh, terrestrial phenomenon, quote unquote. And again, I'm putting that quote unquote. Yes, I'm biased. Uh, yep. and, 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 yep. and I, I think I've already kind of made up my mind. I'm willing to have it changed by other evidence, but I've got a lot of evidence. You got to shoot this down. So let's go through it real quick. Dr. Hugh Ross, he's a little pedantic, a little stodgy, but he'll say that something interesting in, in his book, little green men, Dr. Hugh Ross says that, uh, speed, the speed of the craft of UFOs slash UAPs, unidentified flying objects, uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon, I think is what UAP yep. is, right? So they, so they changed it, whatever. Uh, UFOs have been increasing in speed since the 1910s. In the first recorded incidents, they were, we, were we, we noticed them going hundreds of miles an hour, like 100, 120, 200 miles an hour, no faster, which by the way, is just outside of our ability after Kitty Hawk to fly. It's just mm -hmm. a generational gap forward. In the 1940s, they're breaking the sound barrier. But by the way, I might, I might add, no sonic boom has ever been detected. That's an important note. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's very important. No sonic boom. Mm -hmm. Means it's ever. not physical. It, 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 Never. That, that, that's, what it, that's what it suggests, right? There's no glow mm -hmm. from the UFO no entering the atmosphere. No vapor trail. And by the way, when they crash, by the way, anyone, have, have any of you ever watched uh, uh, aviation accident documentaries? Or have any of y'all ever seen that? What's always on the ground? Debris. 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 Black box. Bodies. Uh, wings. Every single independent UAP UFO discovery uh, of a crash is a... 12 to 18 inch depression in the ground hollowed out with just this huge dent with grass and foliage dead if it's snow it's melted but nothing else no black box no materials no nothing and these things have been increasing with the speed of our technology just slightly outside of our advancement that's important the other thing that's really important to note he writes in little green men using some other people's research in the 1910s where do you do, do, do if any of y'all watched that you remember that where were the little green men from the backside of the moon and then once we once the general knowledge of the population i astronomers knew that that was not possible general knowledge of the population got a little bit further 
we're getting close closer to the moon uh race we're not there yet 1930s 1940s it turned into we were on venus then the general knowledge of the of the world's population wait 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 venus is hundreds of degrees on the surface inhospitable to life maybe even hotter not possible so all of a sudden when the aliens would talk to people they would say that it, they were from mars and then as soon as you realize in the 90s wait wait mars is not a good place where are they from a distant galaxy galaxy or planet right distant star system somewhere maybe in a different galaxy right and now we happen to know that our our local cluster our region where our solar system is is one of the only places in our galaxy that is hospitable to life from the privileged planet go look it up great documentary it's on youtube uh i'll remind me i'll put yeah. it in the link in the description yeah. really good documentary you can watch it for free on youtube by the people who made it good stuff uh but basically we're finding out that we have to push this thing further and further and the aliens are the ones who are pushing it. aliens scare quotes mm -hmm. so that's important now here's another thought do y'all remember a certain president trying to hide an 11 minute audio tape from the public knowledge Nixon. i've got some age but i don't recall that uh, nixon, nixon. How long could he keep that secret? Uh, not very long. It's just a few days. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about alien bodies for mm. a moment. Now, this is one of the weakest arguments that we're going to bring today. I don't think that we have a problem, though, holding it. I think it's very hard for the government to hold a conspiracy this big, this long. In fact, the Soviets thought the same. Dr. Hugh Ross went over there and they said, our... our the scientists were like, man, you guys can't hold hold uh, any sort of secrets, but we're not a whole lot better. It, it, it's hard to hold that secret. So what if what if there never were bodies? What if those were just rumors? Well, we won't know that, do we? we I mean, because they, I mean, especially now that the government is open to listening to these um, experiences that people have, because before. If you were in the Navy or in the service of any kind and you reported any of this, uh, the, it wasn't good. You didn't report it because you were going to get but this all brings yeah. This it, it, all brings up a really good point, though. When you think about what you're talking about, in John Arthur, you're referring to something back in the 70s. What is it that people expect when they talk about aliens? What is the one thing that they expect? Well, two. I expect a spaceship. Okay. Well, all right. I also expect what? Bodies. Bodies. And that's why this fits so well within the, the Christian worldview, because we're not thinking bodies. We're thinking spiritual. And that is dramatically different. You're not going to have bodies. There are none. If this is truly demonic and spiritual in nature, you you probably won't even find your spaceship. Now, I won't say you won't, but to me, I, I wouldn't expect to find that because does, does a spiritual being require a spaceship to travel? I'm not saying they don't emit light. I'm not saying they don't appear in a particular form. But the thing is, do they need a spaceship to travel? I don't think they do. That's just me. That is purely Charlie opinion. No, I, I, I think that there's merit to that, to that said opinion. I think that that's really important to note that there is a difference mm -hmm. between a, in, a interdimensional and an extraterrestrial yes. Yes. presence. And you're going to see or a lack of evidence of that. And that's what's really important. The other thing that people know is 15, now it's 15,000 miles, 26,000 miles that these objects are darting over the sky. And then they make sharp turns. right angle turns. Turns that Hugh Ross says it is not physically possible to do that. He said the G-forces would be so strong that the, the, the craft would be obliterated. Mm -hmm. now, now think about that. 
and there's in here again that that indicates what that indicates that it's not a physical thing the, he, he was went on to also talk about how the law of physics works against these crafts yes correct so and you know. all of that to say all of that to say i do think that what we don't know we don't know it might right. be possible to travel at those speeds you know, and he ross goes absolutely a long time yep. talking about how it's impossible to, we don't know what we don't know but it's one on the board against aliens okay until you prove otherwise it's one on the board against aliens and one on the board in favor of it makes perfect sense in the intra-dimensional but there's something else that he ross brought out and i want to pull that up real quick okay i want to pull that up real quick and what i want to do is i want to go ahead and grab oopsies i'm gonna go ahead and grab this uh this one piece of a of a talk that he did okay and put it on the screen this is where he's talking about the differences in encounters uh and you've heard of uh, close encounters of a third kind mm -hmm. right he's going to go over this and this is a little bit long okay it's about five minutes but i want us to hear what he has to say and i think i think it'll be interesting to to note what happens when you have an encounter of the third kind or further so here we go that we're dealing with something that's real but not physical real because we got the craters we can see the melted snow we can see the damaged vegetation but not physical because there's no sonic boom uh, there is uh, no heat friction and we go to the site there's nothing physical that we can recover and with all these 20 million documented cases no one has ever been able to produce any physical evidence but clearly it's real. Something caused those craters. Uh, something melted the snow. Something damaged the vegetation. And you know, people have been harmed by these UFO encounters. It's not benign. Uh, and this is what I think is really interesting as well, is when you look at the close encounter database, the best you're gonna come away with is recurring terrifying nightmares. Everyone has had one of these close encounters they've had deleterious effects. Zero percent evidence that it's ever beneficial. So the best you're gonna come away, so well, what's the worst you're gonna come away with? The worst is you get killed by the phenomena. Mm -hmm. People have been killed by these uh, close UFO encounters. And it's not just people. There's many documented, hundreds of documented cases where the animals that are associated with these people also get injured or killed. Uh, but it's only animals that are bonded to the human owner. So like their cow, their dog, uh, their cat, their horse. Um, and often the animal sees the UFO encounter first. That's and important. The human sees it again. But the only time animals are affected is when the animals are strongly bonded to the human that also experiences the encounter. That too is an important data point. Um, and then when you look at these close encounters where there's messages, uh, the messages only happen to people who are deeply involved in the occult. There's no evidence of people having a message being sent to them by a UFO craft or a UFO being uh, where the individual has not been deeply involved in the occult. Which is why we close our book off in Lightsome Sky and Little Green Men, we say we are presenting a testable model of UFOs. Testable in this sense. There's a direct correlation between the close encounters and the degree of occult activity of the people who have these encounters. And it explained to me why so many more people in the Soviet Union were having the encounters than here in America. And why the level of encounters in Russia today has plummeted. It's nowhere near what it was like during the Soviet era. And, uh, you know, I was only allowed to speak to scientists who had doctoral degrees when I was in the Soviet Union. But as I visited their institutions, I saw that every one of them had a department of occult physics. And the Russians were well aware that they were way behind uh, the United States in terms of technology. Where they thought they could get an edge on us militarily is through occult physics. Remote These viewing. These departments of occult physics were tasked with finding OBEs. new weapons. So their goal is to come up with occult weapons 
that they could use against the West. Well, they never really produced any. Yeah, paranormal. Um, and what I discovered is a lot of the audiences, the physicists I was speaking to in the Soviet Union, uh, there was one audience I spoke to where at least a quarter of them were demon possessed. Ooh. Now, yeah. I'll say this about Woof. demon possession. Uh, I tell people, hey, if you're a Christian and you run into it, deal with it, but don't seek it out. Uh, Amen. I believe the demons want to distract us. But if, you, if you're confronted with it, you've got to deal with it. And they say, well, were these really demon possessed people? I would walk into the auditorium. And even before I was introduced or the topic was announced, they'd be jumping up and screaming obscenities at me. <clears throat> and not just at me, obscenities at Jesus Christ. And they'd be accusing Jesus Christ of the most vile behavior. Now, I've run into longshoremen that take the Lord's name in vain, uh, but they restrain themselves from accusing Jesus, for example, of being a serial homosexual rapist. You get that from demon-possessed people. Okay. I, I would love to listen to him all day. And by the way, link in the description below. Go listen to the whole hour and a half. Not everything he says is 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 right on. Like I said, I, I kind of disagree with his take that we know it. We know enough to know that certain things aren't possible. He's a long earther. There's a lot of things I disagree with him on. But he's an incredibly important resource in this. He's been everywhere. Like we said, he's been in the room with the darkness. And these are people who were studying it. He went on to say, look, I in my entire life have not, like I've studied this, I've barely seen any. These people who were involved in the occult and all my colleagues who were involved in the occult and are astronomers, they're on the road at two to 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. They see it and they have close encounters of the third kind. Um, you know, that may not have been a clip I thought it was. He describes the third kind, the fourth kind, the fifth kind, right? Mm -hmm. um, Third kind is you're close. Fourth kind is you're injured or damaged. And I think fifth kind is, is, is a different one. But all that to say, these are deleterious. There's never a single good close encounter of the third kind or higher. Okay. There's never a good one, even though it's supposedly enlightening. And he goes on to say it later on that he believes that the demons, aliens, demons, intention is to depress you. To harm you why do you think animals why do you think the animals that are close to the owners why is that a recurring I, theme i thought that was a really interesting point to bring out and here's a couple things that went went through my mind when we when we think about people that are struggling with a worldview such as christian christianity is jesus who he says he is Sometimes there's resistance to that difficulty in accepting that. When you think about, and I'm going to jump to um, an illustration here. When you think about how lions hunt, what are they looking for when they hunt? Now, I know some people would say, well, they're looking for food, you fool. Yeah, but the thing is, how do they go about their hunting? And what they do is they find the weak. They find the slower. They find those that can't stay with the pack or the herd. And when you think about um, a, 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 I'm going to say alien, quote unquote here. When you think of a demonic force getting after animals, you might be dealing with a weak person, number one, because they're having this experience. But number two, how can you affect them for the future? How can you harm this person the most? Take away... Their something they, that's right take away the thing that they absolutely love and adore and by the way we've dealt with this on this podcast before we've there are people out there that think their pets are their kids mm -hmm. let that sink in for just a moment yep if you're going to deal with the occult and you think of your pets as your kids and you have an experience like this and you lose your dog hello hello you are going to be riveted because of this. Your world is going to be rocked. Correct. Correct, correct. And so, Miss Nikki, I know you're thinking something. I well, I was, I was, what Charlie was saying is I was just going to reply. That's how the mafia 
get Absolutely. other people yep. to do dirty work is they bring them pictures of their loved ones and say, you know, we're going to harm them. So if that's just exactly what you say, yeah, what you said earlier. So I think that that's something that it's really important that we start to realize that we are fighting. I think we're fighting a spiritual war. So I want to go get into why we believe what we believe. And I want to start with the chair of theology here because, okay, we, we, we've kind of spelt the tea already. You guys know exactly what we're thinking. I want to finish building the case. We've laid out some stuff. Don't let that stop you from thinking that we're going to actually go all the way through this from top to bottom and we're going to build out why we think that this worldview is so prevalent and why it's being pushed. Miss Nikki, where are some of the instances in the Bible where we would see, we, we don't see aliens in the Bible, do we? We don't see aliens, but we do see spiritual um, activity. Where are some really clear parts of the scripture where we can we can vividly see the interdimensionality between heaven and earth well the one place uh, that we talked about earlier was in second kings 2 11 through 13 and this is where elijah is translated to heaven he's caught up he's in a chariot that god sends and he gets in the chariot and he's caught up to heaven in a whirlwind he doesn't die and elijah the ser his his servant testifies of this well in our minds, that's like, yeah, that can't that happen. Ain't happening. And then yeah, he's dreaming, right? And so you have that in Second Kings, and then in Second Kings six fifteen through seventeen, Elijah is with his young servant, and in the night, the enemies surround the city, and the young servant is fearful, and Elijah says, "Lord, open his eyes." Oof. And when the Lord opened his eyes, he could see a heavenly host warriors that were surrounding them and he knew the young servant knew when he saw that that okay we're we're not alone we're not alone i could go into um what what's a great one of of an animal off well, the top of your head here that's going to be uh balaam's donkey here balaam actually was a prophet and he was being paid to um prophesy for this wicked king and it was against god's will for him to prophesy good for this this wicked king and he's on his journey to go to this king and he's having trouble with the donkey the donkey won't move he can't figure out why so he gets down he starts beating the donkey well the donkey talks he didn't say i'm a democrat he said <laughs> You what are you out. doing? Oh my God, no, we're not cutting that. No, it's sticking. no, no you but. cut that. But anyway, so the donkey says, "What are you doing? Why are you hitting me?" In my, everybody who ever reads that chapter says, uh, "And Balaam spoke back to the donkey, and it's like, um, don't you think you'd be going like, what? Since when do you talk, bud? <laughs> yeah, since when oh, do you talk? But 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 that, that's the thing is that the animal it, like it, the you're seeing science right now provide an account very similar to the Bible. Man's observation is matching with the Bible, where you see an animal. Except this time, it's not a benevolent angel. This is a fallen angel that kills your dog or right. kills your cow or your cat in front of you. This is not a benevolent angel sent by God to say, wait a minute, you're about to do evil to a good people. You're about to besmirch the name of God. No, 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 this is a fallen angel. And then of course, what, what was, was probably one of the best places in the Bible to, to show like that there is this thin veil between dimensions that God periodically peels back for us. Well, in Matthew chapter 17, Mark 9 and Luke 9, you can read about the Mount of Transfiguration. And that was when um, Peter, James, and John were with Jesus. And uh, they saw a um, Moses and Elijah come and speak to Jesus. And there it's, you know, it, it's called the Mount of Transfiguration. They got to see some spiritual things that they had not seen before. And, you know, we could go on. I mean, there's, I we mean, could talk about Philip who's walking and all of a sudden mm, he's yes. caught up and he's taken to where the eunuch was, who was reading scripture and he leads the man to the Lord and then Philip's gone. Uh, there's all kinds of things. And then there's Peter who goes into a trance. And he sees a sheet come down. There's Paul who says, 
I had this experience. I don't know if it was in the body or out of the body, but I had an experience. In John, in Revelation 4, 1, he says, and then there was a door, a gateway opened and into heaven. It says, come up here and see the sights that I am about to show you. Right. And I love the part in the Bible where it says, I saw heavenly things, but I could not speak it. He was uh, that grips me because like i want you to tell me what was it what <laughs> yeah, was it <laughs> I, I must know <laughs> i gotta know um but that goes right along with uh the after death movie what was it that some of those people said they, they, we can't we can't describe it there right. are no words to describe it and there's um you'll help me with this the man that was demonically possessed who had supernatural strength they would bind him with chains and he was able to break forth from those chains and uh, G Jesus delivered the demon from him. He's very powerful, very powerful. Incredible amount of strength. Yes, yeah. yes. And there's precedent. So like, uh, tell us in the conversation down below, do, do you feel like, like we've covered it? Like, 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 is there biblical precedent for a interdimensional reaction and interaction between heaven, hell, and this realm that we call earth? Like, does everyone here feel like, like we've covered that? Yeah, I will say, John Arthur, the one thing that I think, and this is where the church needs to address this, in in because of this very reason, when you go to your local church and you start bringing up uh, UFOs, aliens, blah blah blah, d is there? Does oh no, the we can't talk fit, about that here. Right? We can't talk right? about that here. Not in this Christian space. But watch. How many of our pastors, how many of our, our well-studied people really think about the things that we just talked about as a means of, quote-unquote, this is... Mm -hmm. Well, here's the nutty thing. There's a lot of people in the pews who have seen, you know, 99% of UFO sightings are bunk. I'm sorry. 99% are Harrier jets or, yeah. or drones or people throwing a prank. I know an inventor who literally, he had a flying saucer that he made. Okay. He since passed. I, I, I knew John R. Cyril. Okay. Uh, and he had stuff that looked like that, that he sent up. He kind of lost control of a couple of them and they flew into the atmosphere. He was playing with these, these things that would spin and they would flew off. He lost one or two. God, God help whoever they landed on. But <laughs> they, one of them were, I mean, I'm positive was, was put, quote, the Westminster thing was actually a common UFO sighting because this guy was shooting them off right there in the UK. He was just shooting them off out of his backyard and people thought that they were aliens. Okay, so there the, the, there are those sightings, but the one percent, the close encounters of a third kind, where there or fourth kind, where someone dies, right? Those encounters, there is something there, and it's not benevolent. And that's why when you listen, uh, and, and we really do encourage all of you to to listen to Dr. Brian Huffling and in in Hugh Ross. Because when they talk about this kind of stuff, they've sifted through all of it. Yeah. They're not talking about the 95, 99%. They're talking about the 1%, 5%. Correct. That's what they're dealing with. So when you're talking or watching them, you should understand that they've, they've asked the questions to push aside the 95%. We don't need to look at that. Correct. Correct. So the, the, with all of that said, that's that's what we're speaking to. But just from a philosophical standpoint, we're going to move over to chair philosophy here. For those of you on audio, uh, you're not going to see the little title card. By the way, we are on Rumble and YouTube and soon to be X. Just a little plug there. Uh, and uh, tell us below what you think uh, we should cover next. But for now, let's get into it, the philosophical side. Uh, if you've watched The Privileged Planet, you know that we are in a unique place in our solar system. It's really important to note that that it is difficult for there to be more life outside of our world. This means that we're in the situation where we are on this privileged planet and it's, it's astronomically unlikely that someone would be flying around the war, uh, the universe and that they would, they would bump into us. In fact, there's a lot of atheistic scholars who've come to this exact same conclusion. And I want to go ahead and pull up another clip from Dr. Uh, Ruffling and uh, Melissa Dodery. By the way, Melissa Dodery 
really, really powerful proponent for the Christian faith, came out of New Ageism. Go check out her channel. Really good stuff there. I want us to go ahead and react really quick to this because some of you guys, uh, everyone in this room knows where I'm going with this, but some of you might know. But let's listen to what they have to say about the likelihood of such encounters actually being uh, uh, in a being real in a in a evolutionary mindset, pure chance. Uh, Jacques Vallée, who was very well known, he had his, the character in, in Close Encounters of the Third Kind was patterned after him, hmm. uh, the the French character. So he's he's probably the the, the top ufologist today, um, and he makes really good arguments that there, these are not and really cannot be aliens in the sense of you know coming from another planet uh, for various reasons. Hmm. Uh, for example, he thinks that as a naturalist. You know, he's not, he doesn't believe in God, at least he doesn't seem like he believes in God. He says for the, the chances of beings to just come about randomly like us through evolution, who have the same anatomical structure, same ability to see on the wavelength we see, the same ability to, to hear things, hmm. it's just not going to happen mathematically speaking. And he's in a unique position to say these things because he, he is um, an astrophysicist and also a computer scientist. Hmm. So he, he knows how to take the data and collate it and systematize it very well. Um, lots of problems with interdimensional travel. He says things like, well, we have so many occurrences and, and opposed, supposed landings and um, abductions and those kind of things that it just doesn't make any sense for that number of, of sightings, landings, and whatever to happen if there really were aliens from somewhere else. And they're different, they, they, they're different species. They look different. They're, they're, their craft are different. So it would have happened, had to have happened several times. Uh, on different planets or whatever. And so it just doesn't make a lot of sense. He, he goes more evidence than that. If you want more, I can give you more. Hmm. Uh, so, and then he actually goes in further and he, he, he goes further on to say this, these must be, and this is Jacques Vallée, which is uh, again, a, a prelim, preliminary thought leader on the issue of ufos and uh he says that they must be interdimensional because they're interdimensional and because sorry guys i just want to get a wide view here mm -hmm. uh because they're interdimensional and because they are looking like us they sound like they can communicate they fly things their speed of their craft change with their technological level the story changes these must be interdimensional beings that also care about appearances to the point where they have edited their story, their appearance, their, their narrative, everything around what we see and combine that with the malevolence of the closer encounters. They're deceitful, not for good reasons. I just thought of this. Um, I thought about the movie. So first of all, I believe Hollywood is very interesting. I think Hollywood gets a fair amount of stuff right. For sure. And I'll, I'll give you an example here. And they don't intend to. Uh, can I say that? Think about the movie Captain Marvel. Oh. What was the characters? What what was the, the other quote-unquote and, and, and I want to be careful here because I don't want to conflate things for people. But the characters from the other planetary system, what did they do when they were on Earth? Steve. They changed their appearance to make them look like they were somebody else. What is the attribute of Satan? He's an angel of light. He is an imitator. Mm -hmm. And he is all about deceit, getting you to think something different from reality. And to me, the, again, I, I just want to stress for everybody, when we're talking about this topic, it totally, totally fits the Christian worldview. And so to go even further on that, to go even deeper on that issue, you have a... a a, you have a philosophical improbability of this, right? Uh, but B, you also, it lines up, it matches the Christian worldview. Why do they go after your animals? Why do they go after your pets? Why does everyone who suffers from a, and I use that word very, very intentionally, a encounter of the third kind, why do they suffer with nightmares? Why do they suffer with depression and suicidality? Mm -hmm. Could it be 
that these demons hmm. want you to kill yourself before you can come to know oh? Christ. Oh, wait, 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 wait. They only appear en masse to people who are involved in the cult or have a family member or a close tie to someone who's in the occult. And uh, uh, Ross, Dr. Ross, went so far to say, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll meet people who did not have any ties to the cult, but their close relative did. One person, he says, I knew one guy who was sleeping with the witch. And it's like, well, I'm not in the occult. Okay, well, here, ask some questions. Oh, you're, you're dating a witch and you're sleeping with her. Oh, well, that, that, that might be it. He said the guy cut off his tie and his close encounters disappeared. How it's, about that? It's almost, it's almost like there's a connection. It's like there's a little the connection cult, here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with that said, from a philosophical point, if you were to travel under relativity, and I know a lot of people are going to be, well, actually, you'd oh, have to be outside the relativity. the relativity. Okay, fine. Got to be within 20, a relatively relative. Uh, it would be more closeness than, to relatively communicate relatively. The theory of relativity, Mr. Steve. The theory yes. of relativity. Okay. Oh, 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 oh! I was relatively speaking, though. <sighs> Is that relative? No. Not oh, relative. <laughs> it's not germane. It's not German either. Okay. With yeah. that said, you would Generally. have to, you would have to pilot an, a spacecraft at such a speed that you'd have a 25,000 year journey to go from any of the near nearby stars to get to us. Okay. So you're talking tens of thousands of years a society built on this and on a spaceship traveling through unless you've got some something that we don't know about and that's possible noted noted well but what would happen to such a society mr charlie i think it would go crazy Mo moving to the chair of culture um i want to throw this this one down and then i want to go to you and we're going to go to mr steve because we are coming up on time but i do want to play this clip there's a lot of clips because there's just so many golden clips this one is from hugh ross and i want to get your reaction to it my pulse drive would get us there within i don't know weeks time you got a pulse drive yeah here you pull sure. it out keep and we'll go afterward my, keep it in my garage your flux with, along with your flux capacitor all right let's listen yeah. to this uh which means you're looking at twenty-five thousand years to make a one-way trip no okay Week. that is significant because there's been numerous papers published in the scientific literature that the maximum time any intelligent civilization that's subject to the laws of physics can maintain a level of technology equivalent to what we had post-World War II is 2,000 years. <laughs> Anything longer than 2,000 years is not sustainable. So if you've got a trip that takes longer than 2,000 years, it's not going to happen. And there's a reason for that. Th there's a reason for that. And then I'm going to let you go, Mr. Charlie. Um, and 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 I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a a little bit of fun verbiage on you, and then I'm gonna let you go. Oh. Um, we went from moonshot to Instagram thought in 60, 70 years. For those of you who don't know what thought thought is an acronym for that hoe over there. We went from we went from a purpose built civilization driving towards exploration and understanding technology to self actualization. Yeah, instant gratification and the VR headset live in your basement in your underwear, you know, self actualizing. We went from trying to build a civilization and that goes to the stars in two generations, three generations. Your generation saw the moonshot. Mm -hmm. What's what's inherently wrong with the idea that you could have a civilization that lasts? To over 2,000 years. Well, it's it's like the second law of thermodynamics, right? When everything deteriorates, we think we're getting better. We think that we're advancing. Well, take a look around you. What's our crime rate? What's our drug rate? Shoot, we aren't even having enough babies every year to keep civilization going. I mean that that article just came out here this earlier this this month. We're talking about a birth rate that's at 0.18. And newsflash, you need at least 0.22 just to sustain. Forget about advancing. So no, we're uh, the world's population is not going to be overrun. We're we're not even having babies. We are degrading as human beings. We can't even keep up 
with just keeping ourselves alive. There's no way that we're going to advance to a place of having 25,000 years to be able to do something like this. So let me ask you something. What would a demonic force? Cause, and, and again, you know, just, to, you know, all out there spilling the tea, of course. Uh, yes, yes. It's a, it's demons, not aliens. What would a demonic force have vested? What, what would be their vested interest rather in trying to convince mankind that we could live that long? Could it be that they're devaluing? The reality of a need for Christ and oh totally in and that is exactly what Satan has been about from the beginning um, yes I know we're presupposing Jesus and creation get over it yeah that uh, we've we've made it clear that's where we come from and that's what we believe that's what but uh, just a reminder this this is so important for people to understand the Christian worldview is the only worldview at the moment that this really can be explained. Atheism can't doesn't hold up. Atheism does not hold up with this in on on multiple avenues. So the the whole thing that people need to really hone in on is that the Christian worldview is what can explain this. Satan has all been all about deceiving, has been all about that, because that is the goal. Keep people away from Christ. That's been since day one. Absolutely. All right. I want to hit Mr. Steve in just a moment, but I want to I want to get not hit you, hit you. <laughs> My, You're making me want to do the I, other one I was now. Getting worried there. Yes, yes, Mr. Gun. Taekwondo, Kung Fu, Triple Mastery, Black Belt, and Five Disciplines. I was going to have to break out my ray gun there for a second. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm going to throw this clip at you. Okay, I'm going to throw this clip at you. Okay. And I want I want to get your, your your thoughts on it here. So let's go ahead and play this. At one point you had said that there they're, 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 uh, has been harmful activity or aggressive activity. Has any of the activity um, been aggressive, been um, hostile in your reports? Uh, I know of multiple colleagues of mine that got physically injured. And uh, the activity... And I gotta, I by, by UAPs or by, by people within the, the federal government? Both. Okay, yeah. so there has been activity by, by alien or Non, non-human technology and or beings that has caused harm to humans. Uh, I can't get into the specifics in a, an open environment, but at least the activity that I personally witnessed, and I have to be very careful here, because uh, you don't, you know, they tell you never to acknowledge tradecraft, right? So what I personally witnessed myself and my wife was very disturbing. Okay, so that yeah. was a public hearing, okay, in the uh, uh, halls <laughs> of our nation, and I think it's really important. Why, why now during the pandemic, do you think the government is releasing this, Mr. Steve? <laughs> oh, during that time, man, there was so many people complaining about what was going on, and you know, mask problems and not being able to go anywhere and being closed in and, oh man, they, to get their minds off of all of that, bring this out and get this going and people to think about something else. Well, and, and you know, to not have to constantly think about getting shots and. Do you think it might have been a scare tactic also to kind of bring people into, uh, and I'm just I'm thinking off the top of my head here. Uh, OK, so people were rebellious and did not want the mask mandates. They didn't want the government taking that much control. And the government introduces this. Do you think that might have been some sort of manipulation? Not that it wasn't true, but was it yeah. planned at a specific time as manipulation? It wouldn't surprise me. The government's always trying to control the people mm. constantly. It's always about control with the people. Yeah, I mean the the more control the the government has over the populace, the easier it is to tell them what to do. So let me ask let me ask a question here. 
from a biblical perspective. <coughs> when Daniel was praying and Gabriel came to him and said, Daniel, we heard your prayer the first day, but it, I've been 21 days fighting uh, principalities in high places, which was demonic activity. So is it possible demonic activity can be in controlling places within our political world? Of course. Uh, Have you looked at Congress lately? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no I joke. Think, yeah. Uh, anybody? <laughs> yeah. And, and people need to realize that. And and I I know you knew you knew our, our answer, but people need to think about it. You're so right. You're so right. People don't. People forget. You know, in Ephesians, Paul, under the under the influence of the Spirit, wrote. Our war is not with flesh and blood. It's with the powers and principalities of this world. And this is, and these are the aliens that we're fighting, and they're they're in our political system, aren't they? They're oh. everywhere. Oh I, man, they everywhere. Yeah, and, and and it seems like they're getting to be more and more in the political system. Uh, the way you see things going on, the increase in the support for like the LGBT uh, community, the more support you see for. Um, um, abortion. Um, God, I mean, and let me think clarify about that Moloch. I mean, you know, let me hello. clarify something because I, I, I think a lot of our audience has been with us for a long time knows exactly what you're saying. We support the human rights of people in the LGBT community. Correct. We don't support their right to government funded, taxpayer, you know, endorsed, and we don't endorse cutting off and harming your body parts, especially not your child's. Right, we don't endorse any of that. But as Steve so often likes to go back to Moloch, but also who was the other goddess that, that we see alive in a well today? Asherah, right? What, what right. did Asherah want her her followers to do? Sacrifice oh, sex. Kids. sex and sacrificing body parts. Right. Oh, yes. They would body they would self immolate. Parts. They would cut off their own. If you have kids in the room, they shouldn't be, you know, I mean, we just talked about we a pole being yeah. shoved in someone's rectum. Three, two, one, cutting off the dude's nether regions and making it look like a woman. So, so it's a sex change operation. Right. It's a given to oh. you, Inanna Ashtoreth, to turn man to woman, woman into man. And are, it, there's nothing new under the sun. This is the argument is there is no hatred for people who have a different view than what we do. Here's the issue. There's nothing new under the sun. This has all been out publicly in societies in history. They don't, they're not sustainable. And that society is over um, taken by someone else because it collapses. Every time. And you look Every at the Romans. Time. So Hobbes, Hobbes, far be it for me to disagree with Hobbes. Hobbes, you're wrong. Sorry. Uh, the, the collapse of the Roman Empire was not the Christian's fault. It was the absolute decadence and decay in the lack and by the way every society falls to this without god even greek without god the greco-roman societies both of them did the two great greco-roman societies failed because they fell into decadence and decay what do we see in the states decadence starting to go very strongly that way in decay even look at societies that never had the bible present didn't have christians present there are still fundamental ways that a society will thrive and fundamental ways that a th society will fail strong family right strong individualism and Ethics. understanding of individual rights mm -hmm. right those are things that are that, that are there but what we see in this marxist world that's been created by the way uh occultist marxist i mean that's those two there's a there's a large there's, venn diagram a yep. large confluence in that venn diagram right so there there there's definitely a side to that where it, it, it can't be ignored these are people it was strong in the soviet union think about that well and if you watch the there's a shorter um interview that was conducted with dr hugh ross that y'all need to watch i believe it was in that interview or the one with dr brian huffling where there was a look at there was an analysis where are the two places that are that have seen the greatest impact yes. of this kind of stuff you want to watch a video to find out and when you hear it you go oh what but it makes total sense oh come on tell us well in the u.s alaska was one of them yep 
and internationally uh I russia believe, and brazil i was going to say brazil was one russia and brazil some of the darkest occult activity happens in there and the in the russia yeah. was is a holdover because they actually got rid of a lot of their occult stuff is not nearly as profound as it used to be but that brings up a great point too you if you're caught up in this kind of stuff if if, if you know of somebody that's caught up in this stuff this doesn't necessarily get eradicated overnight no this is a this is a fight and because guess what the demonic forces are going to do they're not giving in they're going to keep their ground they're going to hold ground yeah. so but if you're if you're dealing with a spiritual you're dealing with a spiritual world you are correct it is a fight i will tell you though I, i'm just but jesus said i have overcome the world keep going yeah jesus just said i overcome the world but those strongholds can fall quickly if the right people are praying and god's people are doing their doing what they're supposed to do those strongholds can fall quickly just like when elijah said to his servant open the you know, lord open his eyes there might have been a big enemy there and very strong and they were not going to win you know i've got another conspiracy ten full hat conspiracy here okay now. mr steve let her okay, this one's for you charlie all right okay this is something that i had mentioned to john arthur and nikki a little earlier before the show um you know the people that roll and control what goes on in the world you know societies uh, the economies, the money flows, all of that, that control what go on. They know about the Bible. They know that it's true. They do know that. They know that Jesus is going to show up. They know Jesus and Satan have got problems, and they're going to, they are on Satan's side. What they don't want to happen is Jesus to come back and claim his bride. So for those of you who are wondering what Steve's talking about, there is a whole subcategory of UFO based religions and the occult, the people who do the, give me the tinfoil hat, the crazy, the, 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 the crazy, crazy evil garbage with kids, the, that kind of people, they believe in downloads from these aliens where they do this automatic writing process, but they'll put in front of a typewriter or computer. In one case, one of these tomes is 4,000 pages, not words, pages worth of data and information. And it is an anti-Jesus screed, like a third of it is anti-Jesus and a bunch of these books uh have a bizarro revelation their eschatology is is that the unworthy spiritually unworthy will be removed those who are holding society will be removed graciously from the world the rapture for those of you who are following and listening at home then there is going to be a war with the superior force that you must endure when you say mountains and rocks cover us, but we will not repent to Jesus Christ. Woe, woe, woe is to humankind. The first four vials have been dropped. There are three more to come. These people will see this. They will hear it and they will say no, because I know that the benevolent force that has pushed this and that I've read the tome that was downloaded. This is what they say. This is what they believe. If I can get to the end and survive, the earth will be reborn. There'll be a new Gaia given to us and we'll be able to restart civilization the right way with our spiritual divine beings, our spirit guides, aliens, demons, whatever you want to call them are going to lead us into the new utopia. Yeah. For those of you that are listening, you may be listening to this podcast and kind of coming to the conclusion. Holy cow. This is what hope is there? Mm. Glad you asked the question. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. That, and in, in as we get closer to the time that John Arthur is talking about, I think we're going to see much more spiritual activity. Might I dare say, go back to the days of Moses before Pharaoh in Egypt. 
it's going to be that kind of thing. And Charlie, what was that? Well, remember, Moses stood before Pharaoh and said, you are going to let my people go. And Pharaoh was like, mm, don't think so. Here's some rods and snakes, right? Not happening. And the, the Pharaoh asked for the snakes to come out. It didn't work. He called on the magicians. So you're going to see miracles. You're going to see signs. You're going to see wonders. You're going to see wonderful things. You're going to see people yes. potentially rise from the dead, like the world leader who will be assassinated, killed, or for whatever reason, die, and then be risen from the dead. You're going to right. see that in the political realm. Now, last thought, and then we're going to go to final thoughts for the day. Economics. Economics. I want you to take part of this, Mr. Pomeroy. How has the culture embraced the sensationalism it's, of all of this? It is And why huge. is it economic? Well, well, because we're developing movies on this. We're, we're writing books on this. And because people people are attracted to it. it, it, it it's uh, curiosity. It, it's, it's interesting. It's curiosity. And there is, quote unquote, this is a revenue stream, if you will. If I could word it like that. That's really what it is and you're seeing you're seeing all sorts look we've done a lot of movies or we're, we're gonna have a yeah, fantastic we'll, question at the we're end we're gonna have fun but Shh. there's <laughs> but the thing Shh. is that there is a tremendous economic impact how about for those that want to study this stuff we're talking about grants from the government oh, there, yeah, now yeah. where where's the government going to get that money mm, i wonder yeah. Mm. Where they always get it? How do you, the taxpayer, no, they print it? Yeah, well, they make their own money. Yeah, uh, duly noted. That's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say there's nothing free, but but my point is, it comes out there's, of us. Yeah, there's a lot of money to be made. And yeah. and, and and let's go. Let's hit it one strike harder. <laughs> one strike harder. The like the guy at, from Mufon said it. He had the intellectual credibility. And 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 honesty to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. This name, this thing about Jesus's name, that's important. Other researchers, wait. If it's about Jesus, it's not about Can't aliens. And what do we just lose? Our revenue. Our revenue. All of our grants. All of our donations. Everything. Now that we've Millions said that it's about Jesus, it's a religious it, thing. It, it is no longer scientific. Yes, it yes. is scientific. If your observation is is that these things can be stopped. If these experiences, these horror shows, these freak shows, demonic activity can be stopped by the name of Jesus, and you hold it back because you're worried that you're going to lose your revenue stream, screw you. Take a yeah. walk. And, and by the way, you can see how this works. Our medical world is the same way. That's what happened with COVID. Yes. There were doctors that did not want to follow those protocols. They didn't but believe in them. They, they didn't, didn't think believe they, in them. They didn't believe in them. But they had to. Or they'd under, lose their job. Or they'll lose their job. And this is no different if I come out and I say that speaking the name of Jesus stopped this thing. Um, you're done with your funding. Absolutely. Well, okay. So wrapping up for the day, just final thoughts. Miss Nikki, I want to get your final thoughts for the day from the chair of theology on aliens fitting into the Christian worldview. Well, I think the Bible is very clear on the supernatural. We, we serve the true and the living and all-powerful God. We know that there were fallen angels. We know that those angels have powers. We know that we cannot see the same way that God and his angels see. We live in a very limited reality compared to the spiritual world. And the fact that now things are being opened up between the spiritual world and our human reality, it's not new. It may be new to um, our day and age, but history, it's not new. And totally you can find agree. that in the Bible and you can find that in the history of other countries and, and, and uh, societies. Well, so there's, there's nothing new under the sun. No. From the chair of philosophy, just going to come at it from here. From the chair of philosophy, there's nothing new under the sun. Here's the thing. You can say that, that aliens are, are, are the better explanation. I'm sorry, you're missing the physics. You're missing the evidence of the crash site, the crash bodies. Guess what we have? We have a historical book that yep. accounts, accounts just 
like this. We have the resurrection in this book. We have the chariots of fire for that Elisha saw Elijah be taken up in. We had Philip being transported from one realm to the other. We had the revelation of John. By the way, if you're a partial preterist, you believe that John prophesied the fall of Jerusalem. And he did. And you actually look at Revelation, there is a direct correlation to how the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70 looks very similar to what the end of time will be mm -hmm. when before Christ comes back. You are going to see that. If you look in that, you look historically, there's prophecy there that cannot be denied. Even down to the people, the scorpion, the mane of, a, uh, mane of a lion, the scorpion was on the shield. These are the people who came in as the, as the Roman guard. You have prophecy that's been fulfilled over and over again. We have the scientific proof that there is a God. We've seen it. We've seen angelic and demonic forces. These forces stop reliably when you call earnestly upon the name of Jesus. Science is on our side. Yeah, science is on our side. We can see it with reason and understanding. We can see that it is on our side. And guess what? Do not be afraid of sharing your faith. Do not be afraid of saying that it is demonic influence. You're on God's side and truth is yeah. of God. Yeah. Mr. Charlie, uh, you know, there's so much that, that I could pull out here, but I, I think the, the one thing I would really encourage our listeners if you are just totally unsure of this, or if you you're just not not sure what to really make of UFOs and aliens, first of all, let me say this: as a Christian, you should not be afraid of it. Amen. it it's it, it is it it falls within the Christian worldview. It it is easily explained. Number two, if you're not a Christian. I would encourage you to give a watch to some of these video clips that we've talked about and really give an objective look as to the explanation. You, it, it, I will say this, as a Christian, and, and this might blow some minds, especially in the Christian world, uh, the Christian church, I would have no problem with the public school teaching evolution as long as we also teach creation why because when you put the two on the table which makes more sense you are going to make sure i'm sorry the 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 viewer the 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 student is going to make sure that they choose the one that makes sense to them i have no problem putting all this stuff on the table for a person that really doesn't um they're not sure where they stand with ufos and aliens all i'm asking you to do Look at it objectively and see which one makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think when you get done with it, you're going to go, this Christian thing might have something to it. Yeah. And please, please report honestly. If you see that the name of Christ changes the outcome of one of these hellish nightmares, Huge. Yeah. what kind of Point. person doesn't tell? But anyway, Mr. Steve, yeah. final and, thoughts. And yeah. Um, on the political side, um, just to kind of finish up with what I was talking about a little bit, um, to finish adding to what you had said, John Arthur, uh, was that um, that you know the government is going to expound on this, and they're going to let people in, to know about aliens. They're going to want to promote this. They're going to want to let people know and, and make people believe that there are aliens. They've been bringing it out more. They've been telling people in the news, hey, look, we got these videos of all of these alien spacecraft. Look at these people. They've been talking to them. We got videos of them. Look at here. We got interviews of people. Now, what better way to explain away the rapture when it happens mm. is to say that aliens took everybody. Yep. And that's, you know what I mean? And that's what they want. What the aliens so-called demons want. That's the exactly. deception. Exactly. That's why they put that in the brain. By the way, when, when you do transcendental meditation, when you do automatic writing, you are allowing something to fill you. And by the way, I let something fill me. 
He's called the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, brother. And you know why I let him film me? Because he has my best interest, my purpose. Yeah. The thing that he created me, the, the Son of God created for me, that's what he wants for me. So I let him film me and not myself because I'm very weak. And these alien demon forces, I do not want them in me. I don't want that in me. I want to be fully given over to God and not to yep. these demonic forces. Good stuff. And that's one thing I want to say here at the end. This guy's <laughs> just a prop. <laughs> it's fun to wear on a podcast because it makes jokes and fun of all of this nonsense that's going on Steve, out here. Steve, if to let you know, if if, if you have to explain, man, you don't need it. <laughs> if you have. To, if you have to explain the joke, Steve, it's not funny anymore. Yeah, but you know what? In this day and age, you but probably have to explain the joke. But, hey. <laughs> we all know, know what's man? going on. We know. Me. I know. Okay. Okay. So with that said, if you like <laughs> this podcast or you like Steve's hat, if you like him bald, I mean, just tell us <laughs> down no, in no. the comment section. We need to know. Is probably it bald? Is, it, on, uh, is it the hat. Jerusalem hat or is it the, uh, the tinfoil hat? Tinfoil hat. Yes. Probably tell the us down hat, in the comment uh, section down below on YouTube youtube or rumble by the way thank you rumble for having us on and having you, rumble. A, a good free platform youtube is slowly you know it's up and down but i think it's it's, it's like the band's been released yeah, yeah. so yeah, I, I, I think it's so. good so let's watch our words and we'll we'll go from there with that said yep. uh over two hundred thousand downloads on the audio thank Absolutely you we beautiful. are on the twitter or the x rather uh at further every day like comment share all that good stuff we love you so much you guys have a beautiful day Bye. Have a good day. One more thing. Okay. If you're still here, we did put you to sleep, which how could you sleep through that? I mean, the uh, uh, <laughs> poles being shoved up your rectum. I mean, how could you oh, sleep my. through that? Oh, uh, with that said, what is your favorite alien movie, Miss Nikki? Uh oh. What's your favorite uh -oh. alien movie? Uh oh. She's got to say it. Do, do I need to come back? Oh, yeah, I know what you movie I'm say thinking, it. thinking about, but I'm not sure. Say it. Charlie I don't knows. Know the, remember e the name of it? You don't remember the name? No, it's not ET. It, it's um, I don't remember what it is. Is it the Close Explorers? <laughs> is it the Explorers? <laughs> no, I, I. You know what? I cannot. I only watched it one time, and it was about these people that uh, they went into the wilderness and they were trying to stay away from society, and they ended up kind of. And then they had to keep the children and everybody obedient. They brought, you know like creatures from the the woods that came in and scared them all to make sure oh they Oh my didn't. goodness. I can't remember That's the name a wild of that. movie. Someone tell us in the comment section if you if you know what movie that is. Uh I would oh. say Star Wars, but that's science fiction. And there are aliens, but we're talking about alien movies. So, I, you know, alien. Joshua Gilbert uh had me watch the movie Nope. I cannot recommend it. Have you seen it? Nope. I <laughs> Have you have I can't did recommend you? it, but yep. I, I will say I will say it was one of the best cinematography shots I've ever had. It is absolutely terrifying, uh, but it has a really interesting take on the alien, mm -hmm. and it was really well done. I have to say, it's one of the most beautiful shot on 65 millimeter uh, film. Uh, just a beautiful tribute to to film and the old um, old style. Old style. It's just gorgeous. For me, I have only watched one. Uh, alien movie it was et and i have not watched any since e. oh that's not, not true because we were out of town with dale and christy and we watched that alien movie what movie alien it was uh, probably just no, aliens who is it with um see we don't do that with kind of stuff. yep 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 alien yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 no that's yes we did yes we did i'm, can, I'm telling you can, i'm telling the truth I'm telling the truth. You can honestly tell how much Mr. Charlie even thinks. Yeah, we don't watch. It. We don't watch very much of that. I stuff. just don't. Okay, Mr. Steve, Dune, Dune. Oh, uh, but that's science fiction. See, I would have said yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, but that's uh, kind of alien too, because they got aliens. I'll allow it. But uh, I'll allow it. Well, yeah. Okay, let me think of another one here. I'll allow it. Tell us uh, your uh, favorite. Uh, uh, Tell us your favorite alien movie alien in the comment section. Probably pretty good. Um, hey, hey, it's a comment. The a classic. The one that um, the alien movie that where uh, they were being hunted on a planet. Is that by Predator? The, huh? Predator. Yes. Predator. Okay. Predator's Predator a good movie. movie. 
Yeah. So it was a good movie. Predator. Get to the chopper. <laughs> Tell us. But it was the, the one where they them. were, <laughs> these guys were transported to a different planet and then were hunted by uh, uh, a predator. predator. Yeah. You know. It was pretty good one, though. It was pretty good. Tell us your favorite down in the comments section below. We love you so much. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Bye. 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 Take care. Don't take any probes.